Sir. You allow another moment when Ms. Love calls me that I did not do something. They have the exact image of what we got from the jail in Fayette County. That is it. And if I get another false allegation and you do nothing, I'm shocked. I'm appalled at you. I sit here day after day with this false allegation just machine. I gave the state everything. There's not been no disconstruction. <laughs> There's been no purposeful. I don't care. I don't care. I give over everything. I've done this for 33 years. Never in my life have I seen a trial. I've done 300 appeals in the state of Georgia alone. I've never read a case like this. Judge, I gave them everything I had. I waited. I was at my office till eight after eight last night. I waited for their investigator to come by. I handed him an exact copy of thumb drive. They have everything that we got from the Fayette County Jail. There's been no deconstruction. There's been no purposeful exclusion. This is not the first time. Okay. And I apologize that I'm getting tempered, but I've never been treated like this. You talk about professionalism every week. Professionalism is lacking with one lawyer here. It has never been. I, I don't even like coming to court. I used to love this. I would die for what we do. I used to say, I'm dying. I, I would die. I couldn't choose a better profession. If I had litigated with Miss Love, I would. I would. Your Honor, could we strike the no, hominem I, attack? No, I'm really, speaking. Could we strike the hominem attack? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody, calm down, calm down. Everybody, this Ms. Me both of you, see, both of you, please be seated. Ju judge, I'm not. Both of you, please be seated. You have to do something. You have threatened me with contempt, you have threatened me with jail. If you go back in time, we can just start in voir dire. Jury after jury, you did individual voir dire painfully. Miss Love would come in and say that juror was crying. It was not true. You would say, that's not my recollection after I said it. You did nothing. We start hey, the case. But Mr. Steele. I asked you, please. Mr. Steele. Please, Mr. How would you feel if you were being treated Mr. Like Steele. This? Mr. Steele. Oh, well, I'd like to finish. Mr. Steele. <laughs> I gave them everything on that drive, and it's continual abuse of a prosecutor, of another member of the bar. I don't talk with Miss Love, I, and that's fine. I like that. But judge, I'm not gonna stand here anymore. I don't care. You can take my bar card. Mr. Steele, I'm not trying, I'm not, listen. Uh, it, wrong, there, though. There, but there. And Mr. Williams, you know, to me, this is an innocent man. You talk about, Miss Love said, there's a man in the Fulton County Jail who shouldn't be there, Mr. Copeland. Mr. Williams shouldn't be in custody. <coughs> but he's been charged, and we come here for a fair trial. It's been everything but that, according to that Ms. Love has tried to demonize me. At times, Mr. Adams. At times, Mr. Shaw. Now, I object now to the it's Mr. Melvin. And I ask All Mr. because she wants to Again, win the case. The and now she speaks over people. It's not right. I gave them everything. And by the way, and what I want to tell you, by the way, it's not even the law. If they call that gentleman on direct, I don't have to give them anything before trial. I do it because you asked me to. You said, listen, we got a big case. It's going to take a long time. Give them things. I gave this by this way to the state October of 2023. October 2023, that was uploaded, <laughs> given to the state. I hear about it now. And I okay. wait there, and I give them the exact duplicate of what we have, and now there's a false allegation of misconduct. Right, but, but, and what I'm telling the court is what I said again. I do not appreciate it, and you never. You have told it in front of the jury that I'm unprofessional. You were wrong. You based that on Miss Love's false representation. Your Honor, again, the ad hominem attacks, Your Honor. I, I object, am, and he should I stop talking when I Ms. object. Love can try right. to silence me. Your I don't, will not be silenced. <laughs> But Mr. Steele, here's the here's the thing, okay? I think that I, but, but, I Mr. Steele, please be please, please be quiet at this point in time. I, I you you made your point you made your point at this point in time. Both of you, please be seated. Both, please be seated, and, sir. And we'll ask sir, please be seated. Whatever you do is fine, but. I care about Jeffrey Williams. It's obvious, sir. It's obvious. He, I, I would expect no less because you're his advocate, you're his champion. But could you all please sit down so I can kind of figure out a solution for this? All right. First, let me let me just kind of address the obvious. I know that at time tempers have been heated in this particular trial and they continue to do so. And I know that all of you are being zealous advocates and representing your clients to 
to the best of your ability with zeal and zeal and rigor. However, I would, I agree that, you know, there should not be ad hominem attacks on, on anybody or any council and that you all should think and reflect about what you say about your brothers and sisters of the bar. Um, cause we have a, we have a large people, large contingent of folks that watch this trial. And I mean, and so, and so not only for the purposes of this, but it just, it sends a, it sends not, not the message I think you want it to send. All right. So I'm going to leave you all to your wise discretion in order to do that. But, um, and I'll take up whatever I need to take up as, as, as I see fit. But I know that you all, um, this has been a long trial. It's been, it's very demanding, exacting, and grating on, and tiring uh, on all of you. So I ask you to just take a couple deep breaths and step back and see, and kind of look at and just remember that you do represent, of who you represent and what you're, what you're here for. Um, in terms of the the tape or the phone calls from Fayette County, it's the court's suggestion that, and if you want my assistance, I can always, with a proper subpoena, have the raw, whatever it is that you were, whatever you're seeking to get, I could get that, and you can compare that against what you have. Because maybe that's what, I mean, and Mr. Steele, I don't doubt and I know that you would you would never delete or otherwise try and alter evidence, and I, I assume that that's what you got. And, and I'm and I'm gonna I'm gonna take that at face value. I'm in no way saying that that saying that Miss Love uh, is um, in her her argument is saying that she is when it's stripped down, less all the sound and fury. It. She's saying that that particular type of file has other things with it. I don't think you were given those. And that's what she's trying to get. So I'm in no way blaming anybody in this particular circumstance. But if you want that particular file, and I think you all should have that particular, the raw file, then let me, let me do a, a notice to produce or, or a rule nisi and maybe we can get the entirety of the file. And I think that if you did that, I think that the whole thing would probably be produced to you because nobody probably wants to come down here and see me. So I will work with you all to get that. Uh, and you all can, we can, we can, we can take it at, we can take that up. And, uh, it's a problem I think can be resolved, but I'm in no way, but I would just remind everybody to be careful about what they say to each other. Um, some things you just can't take back and remember, um, Y'all are going to see each other over and over and over again, and um, you know it. It it serves serves you and serves the profession, serves your clients. It, it's not effective, so just please consider what I've just told you. All right. So um, I'm just going to recess, and we'll see where Mr. Melnick is at that point in time, and then we'll uh, I can I can talk about Monday for certain. Okay. All right. Okay, we're going to be, I'm just going to recess in place. All right.